Welcome to the Inside Carolina Post Game podca- Podcast, sponsored by Johnny T Shirt, Johnny T Shirt.com. Get your gear and all your swag from Johnny T Shirt. They're premium subscribers. Get 10% off. They, they've got everything you need at Johnny T Shirt. Post Game means Dewey Burke biscuits i don't i've never asked did you like the nickname um so I, I was hesitant to call you that but how fitting that i'm talking to dewey when carolina gets them 100 to 80 over nc state in a game dewey it looked pretty much like every roy williams carolina nc state game has looked over the last couple decades it did guys played great you know, shot the ball obviously extremely well uh, shared the ball, played unselfish. Mondo was great on the glass. We actually had good rim protection, a lot of block shots, which was great. But uh, Brady got him going early with a couple shots. Uh, Leaky hit one. I thought Leaky was really good um, just uh, across the stat sheet. And State was kind of listless. I mean, let's be fair. They didn't play well. Um, it was not a good night for them. So that, as Coach Williams would say, they they had a hand in it too by not playing great. But the uh, crowd was great. Obviously, everybody's excited with who was in the building. And uh, I was happy for the guys. And it was one of those ones where, you know, the, the feeling pregame was, by God, don't – you can't lose this game. And that's how I felt anyway. So, the kids played great, shot it great, and uh, looked like a fun day in the Smith Center. It, indeed. Uh, it was rocking early. Uh, let's talk about why it started off the way it did. Carolina hit eight of their first ten three-pointers – um, Leaky got in on the action. Manic, you mentioned. Um, they just came out, and, and yes, they've been playing pretty well at home, but after Boston College and Virginia Tech games, you, you had to wonder were they gassed? No evidence of any, any uh, exhaustion or whatever going into this one, Dewey. How big is that rivalry deal to get you just to forget about being tired? Yeah, it gives you adrenaline. I mean, you're going to have a little extra juice on any time you're going to play NC State. And we talked on Thursday night on the uh, on the show. I wasn't worried about fatigue. I mean, I get it. Four games and whatever it was, four games in seven days. Or, but they're they're young kids. You know, the practices are getting shorter, and recovery is something that's focused on so much more in the game today. So I, I wasn't totally worried about fatigue. I think they just shot the ball poorly the last couple nights, so they were due for a bounce back. And we talked also on Thursday that I hoped maybe Kerwin had a game where he hit a couple and he hit a couple, you know, he didn't, you know, he shot two for five, but he hit his first two, I think. And uh, that was good to see. Uh, Don Trez got involved, hit a couple shots as well. I, we may get to this and you, maybe you were going to ask me, so I'll just, uh, I'll leave you with it. But I really liked the rotation for this game. I liked who, who came off the bench first. I liked the way the subs moved. I was pleased with, with the way that looked, I know guys want to see the freshmen play a little bit more, but uh, I, I also I want to see Puff play. I want to see Kerwin play. So I, I was pleased with the rotation. I liked Puff at the four. Um, our spacing was good. I thought RJ was really good. Um, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Puff came out there, and, and he's shown it. And, and that's one thing people have talked about Hubert Davis not playing guys that deserve it or not putting guys on the bench that maybe need to go on the bench. Puff has come in in a hurry and earned his time. 17 minutes tonight for him, eight points, uh, six rebounds total. And I, I thought, look, he brings a good energy. Um, and it's definitely what you need off the bench. One of the questions on Twitter, Dewey, was the de- defensive energy. I mean, look, Tequavian Smith and Helms went off. But Sebron did nothing. What did you see, especially from Leakey, and then, quite frankly, team defense against NC State that was able to hold their best player down? Yeah, look, I, I thought we switched screens nicely, and, and they did make a lot of shots. Uh oh, uh oh, come here. Full here disclosure: if you're it. if you're listening on YouTube, you see um, Dewey's youngest. Uh, so we got with my, us, folks. my little Isabel here. Okay, baby, let me just talk for a minute. Okay. You be quiet. Um, look, they defended well. They switched a lot. We forced ball screens down to the corner, which I thought was good. We still did give up too many good looks on three Helms for sure. I mean, how many times did he hit that step back? You know, it was we knew it was coming. Yet Brady had a hard time dealing with it. And um, so, as Dewey handles the family business, everybody that has children certainly understand that. Let's go over a few stats. To Quavin Smith, ten for twenty-one overall. He hit eleven of thirteen free throws. 34 points 
big game from the North Carolina product and Jericho Hellams nine for 17 from the field, including those five threes, another big game, but Carolina was able to hold Sebron in check. I'll tell you watching the game um, from my personal standpoint, the energy and the effort, you guys have heard me talk about that forever um, with this team or the last two or three years is you have to come out with intensity. Carolina did it from the very beginning. Hitting shots helps. They certainly hit shots early and got them going, but they were able to play and demoralize NC State out of the gate, and I thought that was the biggest deal. Kevin Keats's team had no answer. Sebron, minus 30. If you think uh, plus minus is a big deal, Sebron, minus 30 on the game on the plus minus scale. And then you flip over and you look at Carolina's ability uh, – Leaky Black plus 28. So there you go. I mean, that's the matchup everybody was interested in seeing. And Leaky did a great job on Sebron. I'm going to get Dewey back in here. Dewey, unmute yourself because I muted you and I can't, I can't unmute you. But I, I was talking about the matchup between Leaky, Leaky Black and Sebron. Going in, everybody was saying Leaky's got to do a number on him. And the plus minus deal is not that telling as much but Sebron was minus 30 in this one Leakey was plus 28 that is huge given the pressure that the fan base and maybe even Hubert Davis put on Leakey to control their best player yeah and look everybody on on state was minus 20 plus or 30 right so that that was that's not necessarily indicative specifically of just Sebron but to your point uh Leakey really got into him he never was comfortable shot one for six and, and look at Leakey's stat line. I mean, I love it. I know that everybody loves to, to jump on him, but Leakey gave us five, four, four, and four. Uh, I don't know. So four, four rebounds for all in the defensive end. He was really solid. You know, he, he has shown the propensity lately that he's not afraid to take a couple jumpers. They have to at least respect his presence. We talked about this on Thursday. Otherwise it's five on four. He's been more assertive. He pushed the pace. He made a couple really nice passes. Um, Look, I, I think it's fair to say Leakey's never going to be the player maybe we thought he might be when he came in. Uh, but if he's a, just a little bit more aggressive on the offensive end, it really, really makes a big difference because it opens up more shots for Armando in the paint. They have to pay attention to him, which maybe gives just a little bit more space for Brady, for RJ, for Caleb. Um, so, look, it was a total team effort. But I, I do think that, that Leakey played very solid and he, he did the things that when he's good, he gives us four to six across all the stats and, uh, and he's not a detriment offensively. Yeah, and you'll take that every night when he's giving you four and four or five and five or whatever he's doing um, and to hit a couple shots helps. Let me ask you a question from Twitter, uh, Rareware. Uh, at future jag asked do you think rj davis controlling the pace of the game early as well as love getting early points is the key to this carolina team winning ball games i i think love has to get going early he's shown that if he's good early he's usually good throughout your take that's right well i, I was when he hit his first three i was really happy you know just because to your point he's kind of shown that he's either on or he's off there hasn't been uh a lot of times where he struggled in the first half and then all of a sudden played great in the second. So he, seeing him hit his first couple was huge. And, uh, well, he almost put a poster together that would have been legendary. Um, but back to the RJ question, I thought RJ was really under control. Um, clearly Hubert and the staff feel like they like RJ at the point predominantly. I know they both bring the ball up, but you can see when the starting five is out there that it is RJ bringing the ball up and setting the pace. And so he did a good job probing, getting in the paint. He obviously shot the ball well, got the ball to Armando early. Uh, go back and watch that game. A lot of the open looks we got early were off of plays that RJ made. So threes that Brady hit, uh, the, the three that Leakey hit, I believe came off. It might've been a, a hockey assist by RJ, but point being, I, I do think, and Randolph Childress talked about this on the coverage on ESPN, that he really controlled the tempo and did a nice job. And I do think there's been a concerted effort to play a little bit faster. Uh, you've seen Hubert on the sidelines being a little more demonstrative, trying to get the guys to push the pace because we haven't done it, certainly not to the level Coach Williams would like, 
And I haven't seen Hubert emphasize it as much in game as Coach Williams would. I mean, every single possession, Coach Williams was irritated if the ball wasn't moving faster. And I think Hubert is starting to see that that emphasis really helps. They see you out of the corner of your eye. And if you're sweeping them, telling them to go, 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 the players see it. And, and it helps push the pace. It's interesting. Carolina had 25 fast break points tonight. I think either one of the, I think Wake Forest game, maybe they had zero or, or just a handful, which is an obscene for North Carolina to do, but 25 tonight and state just couldn't keep up. It certainly helped Carolina get to the hundred point barrier. How difficult is it to be up as big as they were? They were up 20, what, 25 at halftime. Uh, even against NC State, even against a rival, how difficult is it for teams to keep that intensity? And I asked that because it was pretty pretty clear late in the game, and I don't know if I've seen Hubert do it. He got into his guys on the bench there at the end or towards the end of the game when they were playing sloppy, um, which I like to see. Coach Williams would do it all the time, but how difficult is it as a player to keep your head in it when you're just killing the team you're against? Yeah, it can be hard. You, you can, you know, you let your foot off the gas pedal. I did not think, at least for the 15 minutes, the first 15 minutes of the second half, that we did. I thought we continued to play the right way, the way we played in the, in the first half. I mean, the State never felt like they had a chance. It's not like that 25-point lead ever got to even to 17 or to 15 or something where you looked over, it's like it's the under-12 timeout, and they've cut it to, you know, mid-teens. It never got there, right? It, it was comfortably – uh, you know, 20, 25, 30 the whole time. And we continued to play the right way. Uh, shot the ball extremely well in the second half. And um, until the subs came in, looked pretty solid. Now, I, you know, that group before the walk-ons came in, at least to my eye, didn't really have a point guard mm -hmm. on the floor. So I think you saw that. They couldn't hardly get the ball across half court. Um, and so I gave them a little bit of leeway there, but uh, they should still be able to work together and figure out a way to at least get shots, not turn the ball over as much as they did. Um, but they didn't have a point guard on the floor. So but look, for 35 minutes, I thought we were excellent. We were engaged and attentive. State had something to do with it. They didn't play well. Uh, but when a team plays poorly and you got the energy in the building and you got MJ in the building, you're honoring Coach Williams, that's how you would hope we would play. And uh, I was very encouraged. And uh, I'm sure that's a fun locker room. Absolutely. And uh, Carolina basketball has done a great job in sharing those moments. Um, I'm sure the listeners will be able to see those probably as, as they're getting this wrapped up. Last question for you, and it's something people ask all the time, and you mentioned it earlier when we were talking about the rotation. But somebody asked, or Jamie Revis on Twitter asked, is there a way to get a few more guys some minutes during the flow of the game, especially when they're winning? Um, or is that just not going to be a thing this year? I thought, and you mentioned it earlier and highlighted it earlier, I thought the rotation tonight, granted they were ahead 25, 30 points, but I thought the rotation tonight is something that could work, even in tighter games as the season goes on. What do you think about that? Yeah, look, I, as as you, you repeated, I was really pleased with the rotation. We don't know what's going to happen with Dawson. Anthony Harris is done. And so – uh, the reality is we're thin up front. So Puff is going to have to play meaningful min minutes because of his size and because of his length. We just, we don't have, what, what do we do when Mino gets in foul trouble? Yeah. It's going to happen. Or what if his hand injury was meaningful and he had to miss a couple games? We have no depth in the post. And so, you know, Puff is to me going to have to be that guy. I don't think Justin McCoy is that guy based on what I've seen. And so I love seeing Puff first off the bench and then Kerwin coming in. And, and there was a good flow to, to the way the rotation went. He, he brought in Puff for Brady. He brought in Kerwin, uh, I think, at first for Leakey. And then Leakey could come back in and spell Caleb. Caleb could come back in and get RJ. He could then bring Brady in and give Mondo a spell. There was a good flow to that rotation that felt pretty natural. And guys had enough of a chance to get a rhythm. And again, I understand people want to see the freshmen. I, I do too. You know, it's, it's easy to say from sitting where we sit and not being in practice, I want to see Don Trez play uh, maybe more than I want to see Justin McCoy play because I think I've, I understand what I have with the Justin McCoy. Um, so, I, look, I agree. But just at least in this game, whenever just about everything went right, uh, the thing that I really focused on was the, the substitution patterns. And I was really pleased with the way it flowed. Absolutely agree. hundred percent. I, I think folks, 
um, need to realize it's a work in progress. And even when they play great, it's still a work in progress. Carolina just blows state out of the building. Seemed like old times. 80, 80 points for NC State. You would think, wow, NC State's done well getting 80. The way Carolina struggled putting the ball in the basket the last two weeks. No, sir. Carolina with 100 to win by 20. Dewey Burke, it's always a pleasure. I know you got your hands full today, but I know how you feel about NC State. I know how Coach Williams feels about them. And then to have the 82 team or most of those guys there too, just a, a special day in the Smith Center. I appreciate you coming on. Take time to talk about it. Yes, sir. Thanks, Tommy. Indeed. We'll talk again soon. Everybody rate us, review us, uh, drop five-star reviews on Spotify, iTunes podcast, however you get it, and sponsored by Johnny T-Shirt, so make sure you support them. Thanks, and we'll talk soon.